This is Eddie Hearn, Matchroom Boxing. You're watching Sporting Icons. You don't need to be anywhere else. So as promised on the previous video there where Anthony Joshua offers publicly via Sky Sports Tyson Fury some sparring to help Tyson Fury prepare for his rematch with Deontay Wilder on February the 22nd in what we believe could be Las Vegas. So the unified heavyweight champion of the world is offering Tyson Fury help to prepare him for that fight. And all the reasons being in the previous video or just wait for this video to finish and it'll pop up at the very, very end. Now, if you are new to the channel, make sure you are subscribed, very important. Now, as promised, within this same interview, Anthony Joshua, he said, I can't get my head around why I can't pin down Deontay Wilder. I want that last belt. I want to be undisputed. And the way that Anthony Joshua was putting it, he was being a little bit politically correct, obviously because it's live and it's on Sky Sports. Me, I don't have to be. I'll just tell it exactly how it is, which is Anthony Joshua said, I become heavyweight champion by defeating Charles Martin. I then unified against Vladimir Klitschko to become WBA and IBO World Heavyweight Champion. And then I unified again against Joseph Parker. I need that last belt from Wilder to become undisputed. But Wilder just don't want to know. Now, all this here is going to be facts for you. And I challenge anybody to prove me wrong. I'm telling you. And the Wilder fans won't like hearing it because it's the truth. But fact is, let's go right the way back to Anthony Joshua's 16th professional fight. Well, we could go a little bit further back and go 15th with uh, Dillian White, the, um, currently the guy that Wilder is scared to death of fighting. But we're going to go with Charles Martin on Joshua's 16th professional fight. He becomes IBF World Heavyweight Champion. Now, this is the fight that would have been very, very easy for Deontay Wilder to make. But Wilder didn't want to do it because he gave the excuse, well, you know, I've got mandatory obligations, blah, 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 which happened to be against Povetkin. In other words, he didn't want anything to do with Charles Martin because Charles Martin was undefeated at the time, Southport, people didn't know too much about him. But it's an easy fight to make because Wilder and Charles Martin were both PBC fighters, Premier Boxing Champions from Al Heyman. So that was a very, very easy in-house fight to make, but Wilder didn't want to do it. Um, then we look at Vladimir Klitschko. So AJ unified, and this was on AJ's 19th professional fight. Vladimir Klitschko, a guy who was managed by Shelly Finkel, who also manages who? Yep, Deontay Wilder. Again, very, very easy fight to make, right? But Shelly Finkel, he came out and said, well, Deontay Wilder's not ready for unification. He's still a baby, he's still a prospect. This is when Deontay Wilder had 33 fights at the time when he became a heavyweight champion of the world. He's still a baby, still a prospect. Shelly Finkel's own words. His own words. So Joshua fought him, and Joshua defeated him. Let's look at Joseph Parker. Again, young, undefeated, WBO world heavyweight champion. Anthony Joshua offered him one third of the purse. Reason being, because Joshua had two of the belts for undisputed, because obviously you need four belts to become undisputed, but which does not include the IBO. So Joshua had IBF and WBA. Parker had WBO. So that's three belts. Joshua had two. Parker had one. So that's one third to Parker, two thirds to Joshua. That's what they agreed upon, okay? Now, Wilder, he spoke a good game about Joseph Parker. He's saying, come on, Parker, forget about all these other scrubs. Come fight me. I'm ready now. Let's fight at the end of the year. Now, he did this around about February or March time. Let's fight now. I'm ready now. Let's fight at the end of the year. Well, now isn't at the end of the year, is it? So that's the first one. And according to Joseph Parker's trainer, and I believe he's one of his managers as well, in Kevin Barry, where Kevin Barry said that Wilder offered him an insulting offer. Insulting. So again, that shows that Wilder didn't really want the fight. So Anthony Joshua went and fought and unified again against Joseph Parker, which happened to be in Anthony Joshua's, was that his 20... First or 22nd professional fight? I think it was 21st. So at that point, Wilder already had, what, 38, 39 professional fights and hadn't unified not once. So Joshua went after Wilder, after Wilder was giving it all the big talk. Wilder said, I don't care about the money. I want legacy. I will fight Anthony Joshua for any amount of money. It's not about money. It's all about legacy. Whatever they offer me, I will accept. 
So Joshua went, okay then, so your highest payday so far, which was against Luis Ortiz, was 2.1 million. I'm going to offer you 12.5 million. Considering money's not really your motivation all this, but I'm going to give you a hell of a lot of money anyway. 12.5 million, which is five, six times more money than what you have ever earned previously for one fight. And you get your legacy against me. Wilder didn't even respond. So Joshua went back with 15 million. Wilder said... Okay, fine, I accept it. After about having this offer on his table for about three or four weeks, okay, I accept it. Now, we know the reason why he verbally accepted it, and again, this came fire with a shady finger as well, is because they thought that Joshua had already agreed to fight Alexander Povetkin because he got fed up of waiting for Wilder and the WBA were pushing for him to either get that Wilder fight done or get cracking on with the Povetkin, which is your mandatory. But Wilder kept messing about and then the WBA were going to order Povetkin to fight Anthony Joshua. Also, Wilder thought, which is why he publicly said it. So, Eddie Hearn sent through the contract after about three or four days. He sent through the contract and they refused to sign it because there's no date and venue. But yet, have you noticed every single fight with Deontay Wilder so far after that one? Apparently, he signed, but never a date or a venue. Have you noticed that? And before that as well. So again, it was a lousy, lousy excuse. They kept coming up with as well. Yeah, but we wanted to fight at Wembley. And they were offering us Cardiff. But yet, Joshua fought Povetkin at Wembley. We want to be at Wembley. So again, they tried to... I mean, they used the stadium as an excuse to not fight Anthony Joshua. Or as one of the many excuses. But again... This, again, this is a fact. The reason that they offered Wilder a fight at Cardiff and not Wembley is because on the date that Wembley was available, which happened to be the date that uh, Joshua took on Povetkin, Showtime, Stephen Espinosa said, that date is not good for us because it clashes with Triple G Canelo rematch. In other words, people will be paying for that one and not paying for this one. So the only other date that they could possibly get was at the Principality Stadium, the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff, Wales. But not that would have made any difference anyway, because Wilder was offered a flat fee. But, yeah, Wilder kept then coming out and saying, well, I want percentages. Okay, here's 40% then. No, 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 I want 50-50. 50-50, even though Parker and Joshua split the belts evenly, as far as the money was concerned. Two for Joshua, one for Parker. So why not split it that way with um, Wilder? Wilder, you get 25%, which is a quarter. One-fourth, right? Because Joshua had the other three. So Wilder was always making up excuses. So in the end, Joshua got forced to go fight Povetkin. All facts, people. I haven't said anything just as an opinion just yet. Now, we move forward a little bit after Joshua defeats Povetkin. Of course, Shady Finkel and Wilder, of course, being using um, Anthony Joshua's clout. Oh, yeah, I forgot. They did offer Anthony Joshua $50 million, which is what Anthony Joshua did say about. But the $50 million, as coming from... Frank Warren said the money was coming from BT Sport. So they had to fight on BT Sport. But Joshua can't fight on BT Sport because he's a Sky Sports fighter exclusive with Sky Sports. Had Joshua fought Wilder or anybody else on BT Sport when a purse bid was not in action, in other words, a mandatory, then Joshua would have got sued to hell. So that 50 million, he'd have probably lost most of that in a legal battle with Sky Sports. Shea Finkel and Wilder knew that. If we knew that, you can bet your ass they knew that. So let's fast forward. They offered Jonte Wilder a fight for Undisputed. Again, kept saying, no, not interested. I don't want to even talk about it. Eventually, they had a meeting with John Skipper of DAZN. DAZN, who offered Deontay Wilder one of two contracts. You choose whichever one, one that you want, Wilder. $120 million, where you fight Dominic Brazil on DAZN. And then two back-to-back -back fights with Anthony Joshua for Undisputed. So no matter what happens in the first fight, Wilder, you, you could get starched in the first round. You could starch Joshua in the first round. Makes no difference how that fight goes. You're getting a rematch, and the first fight will be in America. So that was for 120 million for those three fights. 20 million for Brazil, then two, two lots of 50 million, so 100 million to fight Joshua. They didn't even try to negotiate. They ran away. But of course, a lot of Wilder fans saying, yeah, but DeZone just offered that to Wilder just to get him on DeZone. Come on, behave yourself, you stupid muppets. Of course Joshua was involved in the contract. That's logical. That's very, very logical. In fact, Shelley Finkel confirmed it. Again, go see it. It's a fact, not an opinion. So again, Wilder turned down that kind of money. But he didn't have to fight Brazil on, on DAZN as well. They could have scrubbed that one. 
but come, still come over to the zone and fight Joshua for the 100 million. He didn't want to do that on it um, either. Again, not even negotiable. They didn't even try to negotiate. So nobody can tell us. Nobody can tell anybody that it's Wilder that wants to fight, not Joshua. Everything that I've said to you guys is absolutely factual. Nothing is made up. Everything is factual. Joshua's tried to make it. Wilder hasn't. A lot of the Wilder fans, the uploaders saying, all we want is undisputed. All we want is the best to fight the best and all this kind of stuff. And then give Wilder excuses and passes to not fight the best, to not go for undisputed. Two-faced Muppets is what they are. So Anthony Joshua is correct. John Taylor Wilder does not want that smoke. He don't want it. He never did. It was all about building his own profile off the back of Anthony Joshua. That's all it was. So anyway, as I said before, everything is a fact. Come prove me wrong. Drop your thoughts below. Click thumbs up. Subscribe. Catch you all on the next video.